at 6 p.m. on Wednesday here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hwang Ji-hye. These are the top stories we're following at this hour. North Korea ramps up its military threats, hinting at a new ballistic missile test hours after it said it has no interest in Iran-style denuclearization talks. Labor market reform is set to be a key political issue in the second half of the year after the president identified it as a national priority. Both ruling and opposition parties have ideas about how to move forward but differ on the finer points. And the third quarter outlook for some of Korea's major conglomerates remains gloomy as they contend with a shrinking global trade volume and the specter of a rate hike in the U.S. We start off with the clearest indication yet that North Korea plans to launch a major provocation in the coming months. A North Korean diplomat says Pyongyang will mark a special anniversary in October as it sees fit, and that includes a possible long-range missile launch. Our Sun Jung-in reports. Speaking to reporters at a rare press conference in New York on Tuesday, North Korea's ambassador to the UN, Chang Il-hoon, clearly stated that his country will hold a large-scale celebration in October to mark the 70th anniversary of the founding of the Workers' Party. We are free to do whatever we want, right? We are not bound by any treaty or any obligations of any sort. The envoy refused to rule out the possibility of the North test-firing a long-range missile. Referring to the country as a nuclear weapon state, the ambassador added the North will never give up its nuclear weapons since they're an essential means to defend its sovereignty. He also reiterated that North Korea is not interested in holding any discussions on the unilateral freeze or abandonment of its nuclear weapons, which he said were necessary to protect the country against the U.S. And the mission of our nuclear forces will never change as long as the hostile policy of the United States remains intact. The statement comes a week after South Korea reported that North Korea had completed an upgrade of its rocket launch pad. Experts say it will be able to fire a long-range missile twice the size of the 30-meter-long Unha-3 rocket launched in 2012. The U.S.-based North Korea monitoring website 38 North supports that assessment, citing recent satellite imagery of the Sohe satellite launching station near where the Unha-3 was launched. It added that there are still no signs of preparations to launch a long-range rocket or missile from the facility. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Now shifting gears, the ruling's Hannity Party and the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy are laying out plans to overhaul the country's labor market and eventually boost growth. But they're already wrestling with how to get the job done. Our Chi Myung Gil has more. The ruling's Hannity Party says is seeking to address the issue of labor market polarization to try to close existing gaps. We hope to address the polarization in the labor market, the divide between workers at big companies and those at smaller firms, and between regular and irregular workers. We hope to boost the economy by strengthening the working class. With the looming uncertainties in the global and domestic economy, Korean companies are increasingly reluctant to recruit regular workers relying instead on irregular or temporary workers. Government data shows the number of irregular workers hit 6 million in March, or 32 percent of the country's entire workforce. The problem is that most of these positions are occupied by young people, who are already struggling with a high unemployment rate. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy urged the government to focus more of its attention on this problem. The youth unemployment rate is 10.2 percent, the highest since the Asian financial crisis in 1997. We must see this as a national emergency and devise special measures to address it. The government plans to create 200,000 new jobs, and they should all be full-time jobs. The opposition also urged the government to pour more of its job creation resources into small and medium-sized firms, which account for more than 90 percent of all companies in Korea. The party said the government should support policies designed to strengthen SMEs and help them prosper, as well as policies to resolve labor market inequalities. 
to achieve the goal of restructuring the labor market, the ruling bloc is demanding the revival of a tripartite committee composed of the government, labor and management. The opposition says that what's needed is a new, more inclusive body with the participation of the country's two main umbrella labor unions, the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions and the Federation of Trade Unions. The two parties plan to iron out their labor market reform plans during their next regular session that starts in September. Kim young Arirang News. And now for the latest on allegations, the nation's spy agency used a hacking program to spy on civilians. Korea's rival parties will hold a series of technology sessions early next month in which NIS engineers and civilian experts will offer their explanations on the hacking software's usage records, which are at the heart of the scandal. The agreement was made in the Parliamentary Intelligence Committee on Wednesday. It was suggested the day before by the head of the spy agency who vowed that his organization never snooped on citizens. The opposition bloc has demanded the spy agency reveal all of the log files. The ruling party supports the spy agency's stance that full disclosure of the records would severely damage the nation's intelligence activities. Efforts to restore the honor of the victims of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement continue. A U.S. lawmaker has called on Tokyo not to distort history, while two Korean survivors have sued Japan in a U.S. court, demanding a sincere apology for its wartime atrocities. Our Han Daeun has more. Two Korean sex slavery survivors took the issue to a U.S. court earlier this month. 87-year-old Yu Hinam and one other Korean survivor who refused to reveal her name are suing the Japanese government for 20 million U.S. dollars each as compensation for damages caused by the Japanese military's program of sexual slavery before and during World War II. The two are also demanding a sincere apology from Japan and listed the late Japanese Emperor Hirohito, the former Japanese Prime Minister Nobusuke Kishi, and seven Japanese firms, including Mitsui and Mitsubishi, as defendants in the case, which was filed at a federal court in California on July 13th. Their lawyer told reporters on Tuesday the lawsuit aims to make Japan acknowledge the truth about its wartime history and apologize as its acts of cruelty continue to this day in the form of politicians calling wartime sex slaves prostitutes. U.S. lawmakers are also urging Tokyo to apologize. Congressman Mike Honda demanded the Japanese government not distort history at a ceremony held on Tuesday local time. The ceremony marks the eighth anniversary of a House resolution on the wartime sex slaves that called on Japan to take full responsibility for its wartime wrongdoing. Honda, who led the 2007 resolution, said Prime Minister Abe has the historic opportunity to apologize and accept historical responsibility. He went on to say that Abe should pass a law that ensures young people learn about the country's wartime past so its mistakes won't be repeated. He pointed out that it's illegal in Germany to deny the death camp atrocities committed against the country's Jewish population. He stressed that no one should be subjected to the abuses the Korean women faced and vowed to continue to work against yeah, such injustices. Han Dan, Arirang News. Moving on to some economic news, Korea's second quarter economic growth was lower than expected due to the effects of the MERS outbreak and a nationwide drought. But a report shows the actual impact of the outbreak on consumer spending was limited. Our Shin Se-min has the details. Despite concerns that the MERS outbreak would put a serious dent in the domestic economy, it now seems the impact may not have been as strong as expected and was limited to consumer spending. A report by the Credit Finance Association on Wednesday shows that card spending in June increased by over 8.5 percent from the year before for a total of roughly 44 billion U.S. dollars. Credit card spending rose by over 10 percent in the second quarter from the same period last year, while debit card spending rose 18 percent. Looking at the details, the effect differed depending on the sector. In the past month, consumers were reluctant to spend much at large supermarkets and department stores, places where people tend to spend more. 
They saw their sales drop by over 10 percent compared to the same month last year, whereas convenience stores and smaller supermarkets, where consumers go for daily necessities, saw their sales increase during the same period. Even so, it may be a little too early to be relieved. Given that there were two extra business days in the month of June, the increase in card spending isn't as impressive. So businesses should still work to boost spending on multiple fronts. Amusement parks and leisure businesses also saw their sales drop by nearly $16 million in June, indicating that many Koreans were unwilling to spend on recreational activities during the MERS outbreak, which kept a lot of people indoors. Now, with the government declaring a de facto end to the MERS outbreak, analysts expressed their hope that consumer spending will pick up in the months to come. They also say stronger efforts to boost spending are especially necessary in the hardest hit sectors like the service sector and the tourism industry. Shin Semin, Arirang News. Local companies' second quarter profits have not shown great results so far. A look, but a look at the next quarter is even less exciting after the majority of Korea's biggest firms recently saw their outlooks slashed with the shrinking global demand. Her Kwon Soa has more. The third quarter of the year is looking grim in terms of profits for two-thirds of Korea's largest firms. According to market researcher FN Guide, the market consensus for the third quarter operating profit of 71 out of 109 companies was lower than a month ago. The forecast for Samsung Electronics, Korea's biggest firm, was down by 4 percent and the outlook for its rival LG Electronics by more than 7 percent. Top construction firms and the country's biggest dealmaker were not spared downgraded projections either. It's a similar story for cosmetic giant Amore Pacific, which was particularly affected by the MERS outbreak. Samsung CNT and Tail Industries, two Samsung Group affiliates set to merge, were cut too, and for the nation's shipbuilders and Korea's leading railway manufacturer, the outlook is even more bleak. The drop in profit expectations are largely due to low global demand, as Korea's biggest companies are largely export reliant. And this is why some believe profitability won't improve anytime soon. If the global economy picks up and Korea's price competitiveness improves, exports will pick up. But for that to happen, we have to enhance our product quality, and that's more of a mid to long term issue. But some analysts are less pessimistic, like Kim hyung nyeol of Kyobo Securities, who says the Q3 forecast is based on major Korean firms, meaning a decline in their profits could represent a better balance of market dominance between big and small companies. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. More documents are going digital, making it unnecessary to print paper copies. And the trend also extends to the paper bank books that are a century-old tradition in Korea. Local banks will soon advise customers to not own paper bank books and won't be issuing one starting 2017 unless there is a customer request. Customers may have to pay expenses starting 2020 when they request to do so. The Financial Supervisory Service expects the move to help reduce expenses. The cost to the financial institutions is around 15 U.S. dollars per paper book, and it's estimated some 270 million paper bank books are currently being used, 38 million of which were issued last year alone. The Korean flag is not a standard part of a soldier's uniform in all branches of the military, but soon the opposite will be true. Korea's defense ministry is on a mission to have the flag displayed on all uniforms by October in time for a significant national holiday. And as Connie Kim reports, it got started on that project today. The goal is to boost the soldier's pride in their country and their mission to defend it. The project got started with a ceremony in Nonsan, south of Seoul, on Wednesday, as parents and grandparents attached Korean flag patches onto the uniforms of their sons and grandsons, who just completed five weeks of military training before beginning their mandatory military service. We believe today's ceremony to celebrate the addition of the national flag to soldiers' uniforms will help instill a sense of pride and patriotism in the troops. 
the nation's defenders. Marking the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japanese colonial rule, Korea aims to have its national flag attached on all soldiers' military uniforms by October. Up until today, only the Korean augmentation to the United States Army, or Kachusa, the Marines and soldiers dispatched overseas had the flag displayed on their uniforms. For Private Lee jun Hyung, a U.S. citizen who chose to enlist in the Korean Army, having the Korean flag on his uniform is a reminder of his roots. Although I was born in a different country, the Korean flag reminds me that I'm still part of this one. For many of the soldiers who are part of today's events, the thought of being separated from family during their service brought up some strong emotions. For their families, seeing the flags on the young soldiers' uniforms served as a powerful reminder of all that's at stake for the men and the country they're about to defend. Connie Kim, Arirang News, Nunsan. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. More updates coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time, so stay tuned and goodbye for now.